All right, hello. I'm going to be talking about the tree data structure and its use in state management. So a brief overline of what I'm going to be going over. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about what trees are, what state management is, and how those two work together. And then I'm going to be talking about the motivation for using trees in state management, uh, some other data structures that could be used for this purpose, and then also so an example code I written. So let's get started. First, trees and state management. So what is the problem? In many applications, we need to keep track of all the actions a user has taken. These actions often result in a change of the state, for example, the UI you see. Uh, and these actions also change what further actions the user can do from there. So for example, when you press the login button, you can now access the enter username and password button. So what is a tree? A uh, tree is a nonlinear data structure with a hierarchical structure. Uh, that means that there are nodes that can have any number of children. And those nodes can have any number of children. Um, and so since it's a hierarchy structure, there's a top and a bottom. So the top of a tree is called the root. This is the node that doesn't have any parents. And then we also have the bottom of the tree, which are the leaves. These nodes don't have any children. So to navigate through a tree, you can go from the root to the beginning of the node or the beginning of the tree and go to any of the children until you reach a leaf. So how do trees work for state management? Um, when a tree is used for state management, each node depicts a specific state. So uh, when you want to navigate between states, you can go through any of the children node of the node you're currently on. So those children node represent the possible outcomes of committing an action. Uh, this is better explained with a picture. So here's an example for specifically Uber, the Uber app. So you open app, uh, you, you open Uber, and you either go into the logged out state or the logged in state. If you're logged out, you go into onboarding, which is either create a new password or create a new account or entering your username and password. And then the logged in state, you get a different set of actions. You can request a trip, you can look through the menu, and you can go to the on trip state. And from there, you can go to further actions. So what is a node exactly? A node can contain any type of data structure, but specifically with Uber and state management, there's a data structure called a rib. A rib contains the business logic and network needed to navigate between nodes. Uh, and this can also include visual components. So it contains how to go from one node to the other, what hap or you know what actions you need to take to go from one node to another. And it can also contain the UI, the menus, etc. Uh, learn more. You can there's a GitHub page. It's open source, so you can definitely look more into that if you are interested in it. All right, so why would we use trees? First of all, they're intuitive to understand. The hierarchy of elements in a tree resembles the orders of actions taken. You can think of it, it's very easy to understand how the system is laid out when you lay it out in a tree. It also compartmentalizes all of the pieces of, uh, of application. So the nodes don't really need to know that much about each other. They need to know what their children are, how to get to their children. Uh, and maybe have a listener for certain events from outside. But really, it's, it's very self-contained. And this makes it easy to build and test nodes independently. So imagine you have a very large team and everyone's working on the nodes independently of each other. Since they're so compartmentalized, changing one node won't really affect the other that much. All right, what other data structures can be used? So first, you can think of the linear data structures. So you know arrays, linked lists, that type of thing. Uh, and it is technically possible to do something like this on it, but it quickly becomes very confusing. So this little example here, it's the same Uber problem I saw we saw before. Um, there's logged in, logged out menu on trip. We don't know anything about the relationship of these nodes from a linear data structure like this. We don't know that you can only access menu and on trip from the logged in state. And so all of that logic has to come from outside of the data structure, it has to be in some giant alpha statement, as you can imagine. And even for a small thing like this, it quickly gets confusing, but imagine a much larger application with many, many more states. It quickly becomes very confusing, very complicated, and very hard to navigate through. OK, so what about a graph? A graph is similar to a tree in the fact that it's nonlinear, first of all, and that nodes can have connections to other nodes. So that same type of idea. However, it's a little bit different in that there's not a hierarchy, so there's not a top, there's not a bottom. 
and nodes can be connected in any way. So in, in a tree, right, you have children and parents. Parents can only be connected to children. Children can be not be, cannot be connected to parents. In a graph, it's anyone's game. You can be connected to however many nodes you want in any direction you want them. Um, well, this allows greater flexibility of a graph, um, but it becomes more confusing when you're using for state management. It, you can't tell what are the actions and what are the outcomes or which actions come before others. And also since there's not a root because there's not a hierarchy, there's not a top, you don't have a starting point for your application necessarily. And so it's, it's not as intuitive as a tree would be. And since you can use a tree for all your actions that it makes sense that way, it's better to use a tree. All right, so let's look at the example for a tree. So here is the interface um, that I created for a node. I'm not going to go over all of these methods, but I'll just go over some of them. Uh, you can get the state of the node, so you can get whether it's a root, whether it's a leaf, and the value of the node. You can also get specific children or all of the children of the node. Uh, you check to see if it has children, and then you can add and remove children. And one thing specifically added that's important for this is this get element and has element function. Uh, these look for any nodes below the node and sees if that element is there. So you can kind of think of each individual node as a smaller tree of the bigger tree. If you think of each node as the root you know, of that tree, it each has branches of children. Uh, and the has element looks for any children in that smaller tree. Um, and you could, with a tree, just have a node as the tree, um, just keep a reference to the root node and you don't really need anything else. But I did make a wrapper um, data structure for this just so it's a little clearer and there's some functions contained. Um, and so this is pretty simple. You can create a new root. Um, you can get the current root. You can add children to the root and then you can check to see if it has an element or you can get an element from the tree. Uh, you can also check if it's empty. All right, so let's talk about specific implementation details. So first of all, children. Uh, in general trees, in binary trees, you can have only two children, but in general trees, you can have as many children as you want. You can have zero, you can have 100, you can have 10 million. Um, so the data structure for storing these tree, or children, I mean, uh, must be adaptable, must be able to accommodate zero, they must be able to accommodate 100 million. Uh, because of this, I chose uh, the no or the data structure array list. Array list makes it really easy to add, remove, and then get children of the node. So that was really intuitive to use for children for me. All right, uh, search is another th problem in trees. How do you find a specific element? Uh, in state management specifically, it's not that big of a problem because you only are really ever accessing the children of any specific state. Uh, you're only going from one state to the possible actions of that state at a time. So searching through the border tree isn't really something you do that often. But um, to show you how trees work in general, I decided to include a search. And so there's some different ways you can go about it. Uh, I am focusing on the one on the left here for my implementation. So you start at the root. You first ask the first child if it is that element. And if it's not, it continues on and asks its children if the element is there. Uh, and then it asks its children, et cetera, until eventually you go through all of the nodes in the tree. And if it's not there, you'll go through all of them. It returns false. If it is there, eventually one of the children would return true and go back to the root of the tree. So here's this same method I was just explaining. Uh, for my has element, I did include that if the node you're looking for uh, is the element to return true, so I included that at the top here. And then it's just going through each of the children of that node, asking if that child is the element, if it is, return true. Otherwise, if that child has the element, return true. And if none of them have it, return false. All right, uh, and here's a little demo go to my GitHub repository to check this out for yourself. Uh, but I'll just show you real quickly one of the programs I made with this. Let me move my face. Okay. 
right, so this is uh, a tree I set up. You can see it's the same tree I showed you at the beginning. Um, and the way I decided to display this was the same way a file system kind of works. So you have the root at the leftmost um, area, and then the children are indented from there. So logged in and logged out are the two children of root, and their children are further indented from there. So you can see the relationship of all the nodes just through this indentation. And this program I have is just a way to navigate through the tree and pick a particular node out of it. So it first asks us to type the child node, one of the children node of root that we want to navigate to. So in this case, we could choose logged out or logged in. I am going to type logged out. And if it finds that child, it will select it and it'll show me its children. And now I have a choice, either I can stay selected, I can say, okay, this is the node I wanted to select and exit the navigation, or I could go further and choose another child. In this case, I'm just going to exit by typing exit, and it leaves the navigation after selecting the node logged out. So that's just a very quick demo. You can play around with it if you go to my GitHub page. Uh, you can also look at the rest of the code I created. So here's my implementation for a tree node um, and a tree. So feel free to look at that if you are interested. And so just one last thing is my references. Uh, these sources were all super useful. So I encourage you all to look at them if you have the time. And uh, I hope this was helpful and thank you.